I've got a little tear in my eye. Oh, I don't know why I speak on the mic there after that one, yeah? So, thank you, Rob. Um, so, I'm Dion Kotze. I'm from Leeds. Um, what really struck me as I was listening to everybody, uh, really, really inspirational stories. You know, people just achieve so much with Mastermind. Uh, but one thing that really struck me is that I seem to have come from a very different place than a lot of people. Um, but I think even though people have different backgrounds and experiences, I think Mastermind still has the same effect on everybody. Uh, so this is my story. Um, now, I just want to talk a little bit first of all about why I joined Mastermind uh, MML. So my reason why is that lady there. So that's my mum. Uh, in the last 14 years, I've seen her twice. Um, I saw her in 2003, and I saw her in 2013. She's seen my 14-year-old boy, my eldest. She's seen him twice. She's seen my girl who's 13 once, and she's seen my 4-year-old boy once. Um, I haven't seen five of my uh, two brothers' children. Uh, so I've got two brothers. Uh, they have a number of children between them. Uh, five of them I've never, ever met. Um, so that's my reason why, because I want to just really have the time and the financial freedom to really just do the things that I need to do to live life. Uh, I've been standing still, or I feel like I've been standing still even though I've been really, really busy doing lots of different things. Uh, I think, you know, I feel like I've really been standing still. I've missed my mum's 50th birthday. I've missed her 60th birthday as well. Um, so I really needed to find a reason to live and not just exist because I think that's a trap that a lot of us fall into. You know, we work so, so hard thinking that we're actually, you know, going to get somewhere, yet we're always just standing still. We're never, ever moving forward. Um, so I also knew that there was more to life than just spending my time for someone else's reward. You know, and I wanted to start working for myself. So what was I hoping to gain from MML? Um, these were the important things for me. I wanted to get some specialist knowledge so that I could be a real expert at what I do, so that, so that I can really drive my business forward and really drive forward what I do. Uh, I knew that I had to change my mindset because I came to the realization that the difference between people who have really achieved lots in their life and the ones who haven't achieved lots is just mindset. Uh, and that's evidenced by the fact that you see many, many wealthy people who have started with absolutely nothing all they had was the drive, the determination, and the right mindset, and that's what's driven them forward. And I also wanted the support network around me because I suspected, you know, just from, I guess, the marketing material and so on, I suspected that I was going to go on a, on a massive journey of self-discovery, and I wanted that kind of support around me. You know, I didn't want to do it by, my, by myself. So this was my journey pre-property. A um, little bit of a timeline. I arrived in the UK in the year 2000. I finished school in 1999, in November 1999. I came to the UK in February 2000. I came with my cousin. I came to travel for two years. That was the intention. Um, when I arrived in the UK, I had the clothes that I wore. I had another couple of sets of clothes, and I had no money. Um, in fact, my cousin and I, first of all, went to Aberdeen. From Aberdeen, we went to the west coast of Scotland a few days later. Uh, so that was about three days after I came to the UK. Uh, I had enough money on me for half my bus fare. My cousin paid the other half my bus fare for me. Uh, the next two weeks, <laughs> um, we ate crisp sandwiches and milk provided by my cousin. Um, so after or between, the, between 2000 and 2006, I did loads and loads of different things. So these were the, uh, some of that was during my traveling years. I actually ended up traveling for a year and a half. So I was a housekeeper in various places. My first job in the UK, actually, I was making beds and cleaning toilets. Um, I was a farm worker in different farms. I was a waiter, a security guard, a sales assistant in various places, kitchen porter, washing your pots and pans when you stay in a lovely hotel, uh, barman. Uh, I then studied, I started engineering uh, up in the highlands of Scotland. And I was also a sole trader for a couple of years. I had a computer business just after I came out of college. 
Uh, at that point, I realized that I really loved this idea of working for myself. Uh, it didn't quite work out, unfortunately, for me. Um, the reason why it didn't work out was not because, um, not because of you know, market conditions or anything like that. It was because of my priorities that had changed. Because in 2006, I moved from the Highlands of Scotland to England, bought a house with my, with my ex-partner, uh, we refurbed the house. I stopped the business at the time, spent about seven months lazing about, basically, refurbing the house. <laughs> um, so after I'd spent the money that I'd saved up to, uh, on, the, on the house refurb, I then decided I had to get back into work. By that point, I didn't want to go back into the business again. So I, um, I then got a job and started working for unemployed again. Did a number of different things between 2006 and 2016. So I worked in a call center. Um, I briefly joined the Army, uh, the reserve, uh, reserve Regiment for the paratroopers. Uh, I was a business trainer, an MVQ assessor, and a functional skills tutor. So that was up to 2016. So I didn't really have any property experience by this point, and I had absolutely no money whatsoever. A uh, little bit more than when I came to the UK, at least. Um, but in April of 2016, I attended a free two-hour seminar uh, that's been put on by a different training organization. No names mentioned. Um, however, what it did was it opened my eyes and it absolutely blew my mind. This whole idea of using other people's money and you know, angel investors they were talking about, you know, and, and just it seemed like there was a whole world going on right underneath my nose that I'd never actually been aware of. Um, and it just hooked me straight away. I signed up to a three day course with them, which I attended in May. Uh, in May, I also incorporated my limited company, and I also started Mastermind Local in May as well. I decided not to do any more training with them, but I wanted to do Mastermind Local. So in June of 2016, I acquired a six-bed uh, HMO on a purchase lease option. Um, one thing that you notice, some of my properties aren't sexy properties. They're, um, you know, they're not glamorous, uh, but they work, and, you know, and they do for me what I need to do. Uh, between June and November, uh, I refurb some of my, uh, uh, did some refurb in the HMO, and oops, and I also uh, started sourcing with the JV partner as well. So in November, I actually had made enough to replace part, you know, so I could go part time my job. So I then went down from five days a week, I went down to three days a week. Uh, that gave me a little bit more time to focus on property, which was great for me. Uh, I hated my job. Um, so between November and February, uh, I started managing properties and refurbs for another JV partner. And I also acquired two properties with a 50% uh, JV agreement as well. And we'll, we'll come on to these properties. I'll show you a little bit more about them. So in April of 2017, uh, I acquired the next two properties with a 50% JV agreement. Uh, and I also left my job as well. So. That was a really good thing, because I then found out uh, a couple of days ago that the team that I'd left had all been made redundant. So I, uh, <laughs> I was a lucky escape, I think. Um, so how did I educate myself? Obviously, apart from the, uh, the stuff that, you know, that I've learned through Mastermind Local, uh, I have read tons and tons of books. Um, Listen to loads of audio books. I mean, some of the books, you probably know all of these ones, but some of the ones I do want to mention, uh, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Um, I just think, you know, having that, that, that focus and that drive, you know, absolutely is what you need to do. You know, you need to make sure that, that the thing that you're doing at that time is actually the thing that's going to make everything else either redundant or easier. Uh, also, the e -myth. Um I'm a great believer in systemization, and that's going forward. That's something I'm really working on by Michael Gerber. Uh, the Chimp Paradox, which Eve had already mentioned by Steve Pierce, I realized actually, uh, especially in personal relationships, that I'm quite a big chimp, but I, never, <laughs> I was never quite aware of that. Uh, <laughs> um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, uh, and then there's another, another book uh, called Property Magic. I can't quite remember who wrote it, <laughs> uh, but if I do remember, I'll, I'll let you know. Um, and then um, podcast, again, I listen to a lot of podcasts. The next one is really important, networking. Um, networking to me has just been, it's really been the thing that's kind of driven me forward. You know, the relationships I've been forming with different people has really been the thing that's, um, that's really helped me. 
uh, and connecting with experts. So what challenges did I have? Um, I had some family, family support issues. Um, a year ago when I told my wife, Jo, that I was going to make money from other people's property, she laughed at me. She genuinely laughed at me. Um, her, re her reaction was a little bit less subtle or a little bit better than her, her father, her dad's reaction, my father-in-law. Um, he's on a number of occasions told me basically this thing that I'm playing at, I need to stop doing it because I need to think about them and my kids. Um, and I'm saying, well, Dad, the reason why I'm doing it is because of them. Um, but he's coming from a di very different you know, place where his mindset you know, is, is not quite the same as mine, shall I just put it diplomatically like that. Um, <laughs> So, um, unfortunately, because of my father-in-law's mindset, my wife, you know, I think she was torn for quite a, quite a while, quite a bit, because, you know, she wants to believe in me. She wants to, she wants to think, you know, I'm going to make a success of it. You know, this is going back a little bit now. She, she wanted to think I was going to make a success of it, but she kept having a doubt, you know, telling her what I'm doing is wrong. You know, what I'm doing is just, you know, it's, it's a waste of time and everything else. Um, so it's been really hard, um, but we, we got there. Um, so the other problems that I had uh, is time, especially when I was working full time as well. My job was very, very demanding. Uh, didn't get paid well for it, unfortunately. I wasn't running 150 grand a year, although I should have been. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the other problems that I had was money, of course, as well. Um, the first property that I took on, uh, on a purchase lease option, I had to put that in a credit card. Um, I didn't have any savings to do that with. Uh, the credit card that I put it on was also at the limit as well. So it's, I took it right up to the max. Um, so these are the properties. Property number one uh, is Laura Street. So it's a six bed HMO. Uh, it's a purchase lease option. Uh, the vendor had been diagnosed with a serious long term illness, cancer. Uh, it was badly run and badly maintained. Uh, and it was filled with asylum seekers. Now, this just shows how little I knew and how naive I was. Uh, at the time of taking it on, I didn't realize they were asylum seekers. Um, I thought they were just LHA tenants. I, I really didn't know. I should have known, but um, that's how little I knew. So the cash flow, the, the vendor had been getting £360 pound, um, a month from it. I increased the cash flow to £1,005 a month. And that's just through doing um, upgrading the property um, you know what you know what they call sweating the asset um, because he'd been he was you know he had these um, these agreements with some of the tenants in there where they stayed in there and you know he gave them a reduced rent every single month on the premise that they would find him tenants however they didn't find him tenants every single month so but it was a massively reduced rate as well so it, it wasn't it just was a little bit stupid if you ask me uh, so these are some of the pictures. That's what it was like. So as you can see, the, uh, the kitchen was in a terrible state. The bathroom, that floor, when I pulled up the floor, it was just awful, absolutely awful. I don't know how any landlord can actually, he should have been prosecuted, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, terrible, terrible uh, condition. But I knew that I could do something with that. Um, so there's my wife. We, were, uh, we stripped the kitchen. Um, it is for asylum seekers, so it's not you know, a high-end, top-end top HMO. Um, that kitchen, I paid £275 for the kitchen, including the range cooker. Um, that's the kind of bedrooms, and that's what the bathroom. Um, unfortunately, it, it doesn't stay long like that because they're not, they're not very clean. Um, so six months later, after putting on a brand new shower curtain, for example, six months later, I've got to replace the shower curtain because the stains that they've put on there, you can't even get it out anymore. So I don't know what on earth they're doing. Uh, property number two. Um, so this is T Street, it's a two-bed terrace house, it's a purchase lease option. Uh, JV agreement with 50% profit and 50% capital share. Uh, cash flow per month, not hugely, uh, not, not a huge amount, uh, £265. My 50% was at £132.50, but I'm going to come out, come on just a little bit more about what these properties mean in a bigger sense to me. Uh, so there's some of the pictures of that, just the box standard, uh, box standard house. Property number three, close house. It's a two bed, two bed terraced house, purchase lease option. Uh, JV agreement with 50% profit and 50% capital share again. I've uh, offered this on a rent to rent deal to another mastermind localer who will provide service accommodation to contract to contractors, and that's actually Jill sitting right here. Um, so we're completing that 2nd of June. 
Uh, cash flow on this will be 195 pound, my 57 will be 97 pound 50. Not an awful lot. That's the property. There's been a lot of work going on since. So for example, the rendering there has been fixed and there's a lot of other stuff. You know, a lot of the property is actually much better condition. So um, was it, uh, someone this morning was talking about uh, doing the, was it, was it yourself, Sachin, who were talking about the rent to rent deals yes. where you get the landlord to actually do all the work? That's exactly what we did here. So, uh, so well done, Jill. <laughs> getting me to do everything. Uh, properties four and five, uh, regions, apartments. These are two apartments, purchase lease option. A JV agreement with 50% profit and 50% capital share. We want to run these as service accommodation and at 70% occupancy, that would give us 955 pound. Uh, my 50% would be 477 pound 50 of that. There's uh, one apartment in there, another apartment in there. Okay, now my future strategy going forward um, is a little bit different to what it's been so far. Focusing on portfolios, complete portfolios. So these are between two and 300 properties. Um, it's uh, acquiring these portfolios creatively, uh, focusing on purchase lease options. Now, I'm not doing this by myself. Uh, I have a business partner, a JV partner, uh, who has massive, massive experience within this, within this field, uh, many, many years. Uh, journey and journey and expert. Uh, and he has the systems and the teams already in place. We share the same vision, and we're working very, very closely together to, to, to grow this uh, much, much bigger. So in 59 months' time, I had a five-year plan. Obviously, that keeps count counting down. So in 59 months, uh, I want to run my business from anywhere in the world where I have a laptop and Wi-Fi connection whilst having the time and financial freedom to be anywhere in the world that I want to be. And someone... Uh, another mastermind once said a, a nice quote, spend a few years of your life like most people won't, to live the rest of your life like most people can't. And that's exactly what I'm doing at the moment. I'm very, very busy, uh, but this is why I'm very busy, and I won't always be this busy. Um, just coming back, actually, just backtracking ever so slightly to the properties, I was saying that the, uh, the, f the last four properties, the numbers on them aren't great, but where they really, really add value to me is in the working relationship that I'm able to build with, the, with that particular partner. Um, that working relationship is worth a lot, a lot more than the actual monthly cash flow on those ones. Um, so some of the lessons that I've learned, take action, absolutely take action. Um, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone for the most growth. Uh, that's one thing that um, I've learned. Um, you know, I've been pushing myself out of my comfort zone so, so many times over the last 12 months that now it just feels normal. And I'm always looking for that next exciting kind of thing. I'm always looking for that next bit where I can challenge myself in a, you know, in a big, meaningful way. Uh, property is a people business. Uh, it's been said so many times. We don't buy or invest in property. We solve problems. You know, when I came on to Mastermind the first time, you know, everybody was saying about this. It kind of sounded a little bit like a cliche. I actually understand it now. It really, really is this. Uh, your network is your net worth. Um, the relationships that I've built have been through networking. Um, to give an example of where networking has been really beneficial to me, I've been asked by another company to sell their uh, two properties. And through networking, so I was going to you know, put it on Rightmove and Zoopla and you know, pay for marketing and all of these different things. Through networking, I then managed to secure with uh, the owner of an estate agency, part of a franchise, uh, and they are doing everything for me, so creating the floor plans and marketing and doing the whole works for free and that's only because of networking. So no challenge is impossible. If you want something badly enough, you will always find a way. Now, just a couple of bits of thanks. First of all, thanks to Simon for putting on this amazing program. Um, for me, this has not just been about property. This has been about my personal growth. I've learned so much about myself, you know, my mindset, my personal development. Um, I think I've, learned, I've, I've come to realize who I've always been but just have never been, if that makes any sense. So, so I haven't changed as a person. My behavior has changed. And that's just because of you know, what is unlocked in my brain. Uh, Rob and Nicola McFun, um, so you've done an absolutely amazing job. Um, you've done a great job, Nicola, in trying to contain Rob, but you, <laughs> you, you can't cage a beast. <laughs> Um, Andy Haynes, my coach, um, Andy is, is so straight to the point and he always manages to, you know, within minutes, you know, he manages to get right to the, to the, to the heart of the issue. Uh, he's absolutely amazing. And then David Morrison, 
uh, who started off my coaching journey. So he started, you know, he helped me write the first chapter of this of the story. Uh, Joe, Neil, Michael, Craig, and Andy, so the other guys on, on Mastermind Local. Uh, it's been really great to just bounce off each other, and you know, and I think we've, we've all grown quite close, um, you know, and, and you're all amazing. So so thanks for that. Um, couple of last couple of last people, Mark Jackson. So this is my my business partner who. Um, uh, who we are acquiring the portfolios with. Um, he's such a generous and kind man, and he has such a wealth of experience and knowledge, um, and I owe a lot to him. And then lastly, Jason Living. Uh, I also JV with him uh, for, for sourcing, and um, I don't think he realizes, but he's actually uh, helped me in more ways than, than he probably ever know, especially right at the beginning of my journey. Uh, and then finally, I just want to say that you're only confined by the walls that you build yourself. Thank you. Yeah.